own mindset, he got through in the most surrealistic and sometimes ingenious ways. And they really are very, very funny. And now, what I always say too is the reason why these people were so popular in their genre, they all began learning their art in the live theater. Chaplin began in theater, Keaton began in theater, and Keaton learned from and, and from the documentary that I have that I got from another source that I put it onto this disc will show you how Keaton, as a child, his entire life was built around making people laugh, and from that he knew instinctively what would make it make a an audience laugh. With theater is one thing because you could get the reaction in here and see the reaction from an audience. But with film, you couldn't. With film, you had to know instinctively what was going to go over. And this they all learned. Chaplin, Keaton, they all learned this from live theater. Now, Keaton, he was a little child when he first... The reason why he got his name, there was in a tour he was in... He was in vaudeville with his parents, and he was used, abused, knocked around as though he was an inanimate object, a prop, although he really was a living human being. And he learned the reaction he would give from getting smacked, hit, punched, thrown, would be deadpan, that would make the audience go into hysterics. And that's how Keaton began his stone-faced image which made him famous as the the eternal stone face no matter what happened to him and this is what he learned as a child and from that he began learning how to take falls and gags and laughs and abuses and when he was in the touring with his mother and father he was at a an actors only boarding house and there also was Harry Houdini. Now, Keaton, as a child still, accidentally fell down the stairs. And Houdini looked at him and said, boy, you really took a buster. And that's how Keaton got his name Buster. But you're gonna see the very origins of his career, which I've got a 1918 film shot in Coney Island. So you're going to see Coney Island back in 1918. This is such a time capsule, you know? We all know Coney Island. We all know it doesn't exist anymore. But the projects across the street sure as heck do. But I have friends who used to own half of it. And the stories they told me of what was going on was nowhere like what my mother's stories were. Or have any of you gone to Coney Island when you were young? Many years yeah. ago. Many, Many years, years ago. ago. You know? It was great. It was wonderful. It was. Uh, it's not there. Anyhow, I'm not going to go into further detail. But this film stars Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle. I know that. Anyone you know Roscoe know Fatty name. Arbuckle? Remember that name. Richard Feliciano. Who who was Roscoe Fatty? Oh, he was one of the big stars too until he got into legal trouble. That well, legal or sexually. Uh, well, suppose, we're not gonna, I don't think we should really go into this, but uh, we'll do into this when I have a Fatty Arbuckle program, because Keaton was his protege, so to speak, and Keaton was in these films with Fatty, and he learned from Fatty. As a matter of fact, there is a shot uh, that used as a gag in Fatty in Coney Island, which you're going to see first where he, Fatty, who was the director of his film as well as the star, puts the, his hand, the hand comes up to the camera covering the lens because obviously they don't want you guys in the audience to see what risque thing was going on. Now the funny thing is in the short one week, which is also, I also included from my print, the gag is used again by by Keaton. 
It was originated by Arbuckle, which when I first saw this, I was shocked because finding a, a full, complete print of the 1918 Fatigue in Coney is hard as heck to find. And I was blessed by God to find it. Uh, it's, it's just really amazing how much years later, from 1918, two or three years later, when Keaton made one week, the same gag is there. And that isn't stealing, but that was really inspiration. How Fatty Arbuckle, as a comedy filmmaker, which goes into the other aspect of Keaton as a filmmaker. He was a total filmmaker. When he first got on the set of one of the shorts he was beginning in, he wanted to know what that camera could do. He wanted to take that camera apart and utilize what it, what tricks the camera could do to overemphasize his comedic genius. So you're gonna love these films because I love them. And then they're from my collection, which I really killed myself to find throughout these decades. I've been collecting film in 16 millimeter since I, well, I began it in high school going in 16 millimeter. Prior to that, my father, Bert Carpenter, who was a medical photographer uh, in Manhattan, he first introduced me that you could show films at home. These movies that you watch on TV, I used to love the Channel 5 horror movies, the universal horror movies, but you could show these at home. So I went mad and the gates of Nirvana opened up for me that I could have this power to compel an audience to band together. And that's what I do all through Nassau and Suffolk now. I also taught at uh, Farmingdale State College with my way, my way of film program is to utilize the film as a tool to teach the history of what was then, what we were doing then, how the world, how America was then, but by seeing it and hearing from their dialogue what was going on. Anyhow, that's not getting us anywhere fast. So we're going to go to the show and we're going to begin. I found a, an actual little biography on Keaton. So they're going to repeat everything I just said. So enjoy the show. If so, if you could turn off the light to whoever's back there, I'd appreciate it. If you get fucked in. And enjoy the show and God bless. Oh, I must tell you, for St. Patrick's Day, uh, March 15th, I will be here again showing Riley the Cop. And with Riley the Cop, a very funny Irish and Manhattan themed mood comedy, silent comedy again, I have with it an actual tour of Manhattan in 1928. And then I have a cartoon, which was the first. Uh, that's all right. No, stay, stay, stay. That's all right. Don't worry. Someone didn't pay the electricity bill. Anyhow, uh, I have the first Farmer Alfalfa synchronized with music and effects cartoon. So, and there's also this film, Riley the Cop, is a Vitaphone film. Vitaphone meaning it was synchronized with a record that had music and time to fix with it. And I hope you all come, because the show is going to be a lot of fun. So enjoy it. I'm glad you're there on the internet and my, my page. And I thank you all for being here in my auditorium. Thank you so much. This is... That's March 15th. Now. That's yeah, no, say it. All right. All right, now if anybody wants a VHS of Buster Keaton, I have it. If you want it, it's here. If anyone has a VHS player at home. Oh, okay. Well, let's hope it plays. You know the heck I had before. All right, thank you. Enjoy, folks. Yeah, I am known as the movie man. I wonder why. Don't throw it. And that brings us to Joseph Francis Keaton, the great stone face of the silent screen.